They say success can be delayed but not denied. And when it comes to growing the American apple trees here in Jamaica, those words are starting to feel a little bit more truer. Hey folks, this is Sean Gnosis. And today I'm gonna to be grafting some more of my apple trees using the chip budding method. So it's the 5th day of April and I just recently got my latest sets of cyan wood. Shout out to Fruitwood Nursery for making this possible as they're my number one source for all upper cyan wood all the way from California. Um, it usually takes between one to two weeks before I get my cyan wood. And you know, due to their good packaging, you know, they always come in good condition. As you can observe, they came sealed and wrapped in a damp paper towel to ensure they are preserved. So these are four popular apple varieties, Akane, Royal Gala, Pink Lady, and Regular Gala. I typically snip the ends off just to ensure that they're still viable. And after that, I put them in some water in a container. So, before you start doing a grafting, I highly recommend that you have some available identification tags in order to keep track of the varieties that you have grafted. No, the reason why I use the chick budding method to graft apples here in Jamaica is because of the scarcity of cyan wood. For example, if you were to use the cleft grafting method, at best your chances of grafting success rate will be two, three if you're lucky. This is why we use the chick budding. With a chip bud in, you're able to maximize as much of the buds on the cyan wood. For example, most cyan wood comes with at least eight buds. That means you're able to graph eight trees. So that's eight chances. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll become more adept at grafting. Despite my grafting knife being very sharp, one thing I've realized that when I'm doing my grafting, especially on seeding rootstocks that are fibrous, tends to give a little bit more resistance. And that's not good because it tends to mess up the grafting. 
But if you stick around to the end, I'll show you an example of that and how to overcome that issue. Sometime in my spare time, I like to read upon the different type of grafting methods used by nurserymen and the chick body method seems to be the one that keeps on popping up. Here is a detailed diagram showing the steps involved in completing a chick body method. By the way, if anybody knows the source to this diagram, I would really appreciate if they leave a comment. By the way, I'm using Paraflim to seal my graphs. But the thing I like about the Paraflim is that it's strong enough to protect the graphs from the elements, but it's weak enough for the bolts to break through. Now after applying your paraflip, it's important to add another layer of protection. This is where the elastic rubber band comes into play. It ensures that the cambium layers are tightly snugged together to ensure maximum contact points. Once you have completed your graphs, it's important to add a tag for future reference. Now here's a moment we all have been waiting for, the results. As you can observe, there are quite a few, quite a few different varieties. We have Golden Russet, a popular American variety. Here we have the variety called Hawaii. And this is just three weeks after grafting. And we also have Fuji, a very popular and vigorous variety originating from Japan, as the name suggests. And this is Winter Banana, a very precocious variety known for its early bearing characteristics. As you can observe, it's also blossoming, but I'm not going to allow it to bear fruit as yet because of its age. Another winter banana graph with blossoms. This is William's Pride alongside early Fuji. Overall, I think I've successfully grafted over 20 varieties.
If you made it this far, this is the bonus section that I promised earlier that I'll show you how to deal with mistakes or issues when chipboard grafting. This issue tends to happen due to poor knife control or, in my experience, when the rootstocks are very fibrous and woody. To avoid this, I typically graft a little bit above the recommended grafting height, usually around 8 inches to 9 inches. This gives me a little bit more wiggle room to actually correct my mistake. If you found this video useful or motivating, please remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. It really helps a lot. See you in the next video.